Hey, what's going on? It's me, Sean. So I wanted to come out and say that never before in history, never before in history, have we as a people have not been able to bow down our heads to the Lord God. And this Sunday, yesterday, because today is Monday the 6th, um, yesterday, the 5th of April, 2020, Churches were closed due to coronavirus, COVID-19, and uh, the policies of the government saying uh, about social gatherings. A lot of churches, many, many churches in the U.S. were closed. There were some, thank God, in the states uh, in the South that were that held um, Palm Sunday Mass. Thanks be to God. What's going on is that they're taking our civil liberties from us. They're taking our God from us. They're taking our love from us. They're taking our health. But more importantly, is they're taking, they're trying to take away our faith, our belief. And whether you... Go to church, go to synagogue, or go to the mosque. Throughout history, we've always been able to go to a place of worship and give praise to God. Whether in war times or natural disasters or family disasters, We as a people, all of us collectively around the world, have always been able to look to God, bow our heads down to God, and say thank you, and give praise. But this is the most detrimental thing that any government... I want to interrupt this video because I needed to put something else in here that's very, very relevant. I had said at the top of the video that never before in history has anything occurred like the COVID-19 and uh, nothing else in history had compared to uh, what they're doing, the government is doing with stopping us from going to religious services, closing the churches, closing the, um, the temples, closing the mosques so we cannot bow our heads down. But, because I was so passionate, and you cannot be passionate and forget history, because history, if you dig deep enough, you'll find the truth. So, in history, let's start out with colonialism of Africa. Now, this applies to everybody. I'll get to everybody in a few seconds. When the Portuguese and when the Dutch went into Africa and they... They extracted the African out of Africa, out of the different countries of Africa. The first thing they did was beat them and tell them no talking, no communications. They stripped them of the clothes. They stripped them of their culture. And they stripped them of their religion. They could not do the religion that they were used to doing at all, any type of religion. So when they came, when the African came to this country, to America, to work as slaves, to pick cotton and to be the wet nurse and for the slave masters and mistresses and to cook and to clean and to do every menial job that the white man or white woman did not want to do, starting at 4.30 in the morning, going probably until late in the, late in the night, 10 o'clock at 11 o'clock at night for decades. Part of colonialism was to stop all communications, all faith, all social gatherings, anything to break the African man and the African woman and to beat them into Submission, literally beat them, whip them, hang them, accuse them of, atro- of atrocities. 
just to get them to work this new commodity, this new uh, vegetable or, or plant called cotton because cotton was the icon at that time uh, of the 19th century, the icon of industry. Clothes were being made. There was the cotton gin. So cotton had to be produced. And you better believe the white man, the owners in the South were not going to go out in that heat in the fields and do shit. Excuse my German. So that's one instance where there was even divide and conquer between the different tribes of African nations, of African peoples. Everything to break the back, to break the spine of the African man and the African woman. That's one instance through, through, in history. Another instant is when in the 1930s in Germany, you had the German government be extremely jealous of the Jewish person, the Jewish people, because the Jewish people are the most highly learned people. Outdoing the Jesuits, outdoing the Mormons. The Jewish people are the most learned people on this planet. And there are other people who at that time and still are very jealous of the Jewish man because all he wants to do is read about God, learn how to um, pray to God more succinctly, more closely, more uh, lovingly. That's, and they do not mix. They don't. Period. So in the 1930s, you had German people, German government to come out against uh, the Jewish people, where Jewish people had shops where they had their mansions and uh, the regular German people lived out in the country, not in great houses. They lived out in the, in the forest in Germany and in Poland and Czechoslovakia and different places like that. And they took the culture from the Jewish people. They stopped them from talking. They put them in places called ghettos. Where do you think that word comes from? Ghetto is a German word that means one type of person lives in that neighborhood. And they took that word and they projected it upon black people in the 1950s, 1960s, starting out with uh, Harlem, New York, New York, 125th Street. So they called that a ghetto. This is one type of person living there, the black people. So in the 1930s, you had ghettos where even the streets were cordoned off, where regular German people did not mix with Jewish people, and they kept them in those um, ghettos until they were ready to bring them to places like Treblinka, Auschwitz, Dachau, concentration camps. There was no talking. There, um, when they put them on cattle cars and trains to go from one section of Germany, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Yugoslavia, to different camps that I just mentioned, and they took their clothes away from them. They told them not to talk. They beat them. They told them they could not use their uh, religion. Families were separated. Whole families were gassed, children were gassed, adults were gassed. And this is the utter truth of history. So when you have a war, even in, even in here in America, the colonialism, the white man comes to America and settles the West. The, excuse me, the West was already settled. There were Native Americans living here. And you took their, their culture away from the Native Americans, the Cherokee, the Choctaw, the Mohawk, the Navajo. You took their culture away from them. They could not talk in their language. They could not make religion. They could not associate with each other. Even down to not being able, the women could not even sew clothes, knit clothes 
for their people because the white man thought that there would be messages within the clothing, knitted within the clothing, sewn within the clothing. So they had no culture. And this is what, I want to say colonialism is. This is what war is. Now, the COVID-19, they've taken away our civil liberties. We cannot go to work. We're based in home now. A lot of people are, are working from home. Even to people on television and news media are um, pronounced from their homes. Much like this. A little bit more professional than what I'm doing right now. No one can go to restaurants, no gatherings, no weddings, no funerals. Churches, synagogues, and mosques are closed. This uh, Palm Sunday, yesterday, like I spoke of, you couldn't go to church because a gathering of 10 or more people is illegal. There have been um, uh, pastors in the South that got arrested because they had services. There was one service where um, the priest was giving out palms in the parking lot, I believe it was, to passers by in cars. We are in, and they're not saying this, we are in, you, it, we are in war. This is wartime in America, but it's a civil war. It's the government against the populace. We are having a civil war. Anytime they stop you or stop us from going to college, going to university, going to restaurants, going to Broadway shows, to movies, even to walk in the street this week, this is Monday the 6th, and they're telling us here in New York especially not to go out because it's going to be the apex of the storm, the apex of the, the virus. In other words, it's going to peak, it's going to peak. So many people are going to expire. This is a form of control, divide and conquer, control. Uh, an older word would be colonialism. Uh, this is America's second civil war. And what I believe it's going to happen is martial law where the military, which is basically already here in parts of hospitals. We have uh, the National Guard in uh, some of the hospitals. We have uh, hospital tents in Central Park. An aqueduct raceway where the races uh, for horses go, there's a, there's a hospital there, a makeshift hospital, MASH, a mobile unit hospital, surgical hospital. That's what MASH stands for, M-A-S-H, Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. And that's what we have now in 2019. So we are at war. And even it's stated that government officials have said, yes, we are at war, but we're thinking, the regular populace is thinking they mean war against a germ, war against this virus. That's not it. It's war projected from government, not only American government. This is, when you go to, when a country goes to war, it's well planned and well thought of long, years before any soldier steps foot on a foreign land. They know what the commodity is way before they go in uh, to a country milita militarily. They know the casualties. They know the armament that the, the, the opposing uh, government or country is going to have and how to eradicate that. They know what uh, pockets of people will fight back and what pockets of people will be um, laid back and not be able to do anything, whether that's the young, the very young, the very old, the sick, they know exactly what will transpire. So 
So I wanted to make this interjection to state that this has happened. And I apologize. I'm the first one to correct myself if I feel that I'm wrong. And I made that film so early in the morning uh, today, this morning. And as the time progressed, because I usually drop on Tuesdays and today is Monday. As the time progressed, I realized, you know, this has been happening for millennium. Um, and I, like I said before, the wrath of God is coming. And there's never a timetable, whether you look in the Bible through uh, the codes, the angelic codes, or uh, try to um, make computations via binary codes to find out what event is going to transpire. You never know what God has in store because this thing, this man-made disease, didn't just pop up. It's not a natural disaster. And as I said before, so many souls are going from the, uh, are piercing the membrane between life and death. So many souls are, are now uh, in heaven and they're waiting, they're waiting now. Uh, for the judgment of God. This is a, 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 a pulling out. There will be an ascension, but there's a pulling out now. And you better take your sides. If you're for the technical and you want to get that, that RFID chip, which is going to be offered, it's already been offered. Well, it's going to be uh, mandatory. They're not telling you that yet. And you're on the side of evil. You're on the side of the devil. You may as well just walk around right now with a tattoo of 666 on your forehead. And those who believe in God, like myself, it's a stronger entity that you have to study. You just cannot verbalize that you believe in God, that you love God, that you love Jesus. It's Knowing the Bible, reading the Bible, ingesting the Bible. There's a part in, in Revelations that, that says that the angel offered the book and it tasted sweet. And then when it went to the stomach of the particular person, again, I'm not that eloquent, that it was bitter. So you have to know the Bible, live the Bible, speak the Bible. And again, I'm not eloquent. I'm not an aficionado on the Bible. Have I studied? Yeah, I've studied, like I said in the video, in another video, the Holy Bible, the Holy Torah, the five first books of Moses, even to the Quran. So we must be part of the Bible. Bring out your Bible. Bring out the King James, whatever Bible that you have. Bring that out. Read it. Not read it just on Sunday. We don't have that, that, that luxury anymore. That book has to be read hour by hour. You know what I'm doing? I'm learning the rosary. Because there's going to come a time where it's going to be three days of darkness. You don't know when the time it's going to transpire. I don't know. Only God knows. Not even the angels in heaven know when that time is. But there's going to be a time of the wrath of God. Because so many things throughout history, America's history, have gone unchecked. Holy days changed from Saturday to Sunday. Read it. Do your own research like I tell you to do. Don't believe me. Who am I? Don't believe me. I'm, I'm just one grain of sand on a beach. But I, my calling in the later part of my life has been to let people know and to help people through this instrument What else can I possibly say?
Learn your Bible. Cry out to God. And I keep telling you, believe in God, believe in Jesus. Pray to God, pray to Jesus, pray to the universe. Pray to uh, the Mother Earth. And I say Mother Earth because I am not excluding Native Americans, which so many people have done over the decades. When tragedies happen, they totally forget about the archetype, the icon of this country. The first man in this country is the American native. But collectively, across the world, in each and every country, whether you call your God Allah, or God, or Buddha, or whoever you pray to, if it's a good entity, cry out. Cry out to God. Ask God to crush this coronavirus. It's only a man-made entity. And God is the creator of this world and many, many more. He created you. He created me. There's nothing that can stand in the way of God. But God wants us to praise him, to love him, to speak his, his words, to live his words. To be kind to neighbors, go out and find out what, you, what your neighbor is doing within a house. You don't have to hug them or touch them or anything. You can talk, through them through, talk to them through the door. How are you? Do you need anything? It's the one thing that Jesus protests. Be kind to your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love your brother. It's easy to love a relative, a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, an uncle. It's easy to love them. It's difficult to love your neighbors. But that's what Jesus wants. Because when it's all said and done within the book of life, what are you going to say? Oh, it was very easy for me because I, I love the relative. Everybody loves their relative for the most part. The most difficult thing is to love your enemy and to love your neighbor. Me included. Um, so I wanted to make this interjection to say that we are at war. It's a technical war. It's the 21st century war. It's a civil war. And I talk about the United States because I live here. So I know this uh, the best. <laughs> when President Trump gets on television, makes a press conference, and there's Vice President Pence, and then there's other people from the White House. How close do you think they're standing? They're not standing six feet away. They're standing shoulder to shoulder almost. So why is it being projected to have social distancing? And I don't mean to repeat myself because the, the original part of this video uh, talks a little bit of, uh, very little about that. But when you see President Trump and Vice President Pence talking to the press, the press is, is six feet away from each other. But the president isn't. He's very close to um, the constituents of, of the White House. The president also said, he's also said that he's not going to wear a mask. He said, you can wear it, you, you don't have to wear it. I choose not to wear it. That's what he said. That's what President Trump said. And I've written and I've stated that the COVID-19 pandemic is man-made. But what I also want to bring to life is when there is a pandemic, AIDS, Ebola, swine flu, SARS, at the same time this being formulated in laboratories, and I mean mega laboratories like Merck, Johnson Johnson, and others 
uh, that I don't know, but are um, relevant and working on COVID-19 to propagate it. There's also a side, a department that makes a cure. This isn't a new disease. This is a disease that they've worked on for 10, possibly 20, 15 years. Because aside from formulating it with nanoparticles, what I spoke about, which is the engine of, of uh, the, the virus, there's a cure. CDC won't mention the cure because the cure is only, it's exclusive for world leaders, presidents, kings, queens, emperors, Vatican City, the Pope. You will never, and if I tell you that no world leader will drop dead from this disease and someone does, I'll come back and make a video about it. Right now, uh, it's stated that Prince Charles has it. It's stated that um, it's stated that um, the Prime Minister of England has has uh, COVID nineteen. It was stated that oh, the Pope uh, was had a cold, sneezing and coughing. He didn't have it. He had. He had coronavirus, he had COVID-19, but he was given the cure for it. As I always tell you, do your research, read, listen. Don't, re don't listen to me. Don't listen to other people on YouTube. Go and do your research and read. Dig deep. Because on the surface, there's pablum. When you dig deep, you find the meat and potatoes of a situation. So I want to return you to the original part of this video, and I want to thank all of you for your time and patience. Pray out to God. Cry out to God. And lastly, I want to say, because I have not mentioned this at all, this will be very last of this particular segment, there is a, a asteroid coming. It's stated by NASA that it will be, it will come very close to the Earth in April 29th this year. This this month, the 29th of this month, which is April. Um, they have not stated what the effects of it will be, whether it will just be seen in the sky, or will it be that much more relevant? Will anything occur? Will it blacken out the national grid? And I don't want to frighten anybody, but we're all frightened anyway. A lot of us are in shock. Um, we can't eat. We can't sleep. But this is purposeful. This is a deliberate thing. This is the type of divide and conquer. So, so the comet, the asteroid is coming. It's also stated that from NASA, whether you believe NASA or not, that it also will be back in 2036, the year 2036. And it'll also come back much more close in 2079, in the year 2079. So this is a short range. This is, a, I was gonna say mid-range, but this is a short range uh, meteor or asteroid. And we don't know what the effects could be and it's, Stated that this is Apophis. I believe that's the correct pronunciation. Apophis is also known in the Bible. So will the wrath of God begin with this asteroid? It's also noted that in Revelations, the comet or the asteroid or meteor known as Wormwood. So will God's wrath begin? It's going to be a God's wrath. I'm not eloquent enough to say. I'm not knowledgeable enough to say. Who am I? Who am I? I'm, no, I'm nothing insofar as, 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 the, you know, as the world is concerned. 
there are much more people who are versed. What I'm trying to say is there are people who are much more versed in scholarly, um, biblical knowledge than I, much more. But I believe and I cry out and I have faith in God. And so that's it for this particular segment. And I'll return you to the original part of this uh, video. Thank you so much for your time and patience. Love God. Cry out to God. Be faithful to God. God bless you. That so many souls are entering heaven, are passing through that membrane from life to death, that God is very much aware of what's going on and doesn't like it because these are not passings on. People are not passing away due to natural causes. They're not passing away due to natural catastrophes like earthquakes or drownings or uh, monsoons or tsunamis. People are passing away because of a man-made virus, which is now called COVID-19. And I don't know what else to say in this video, except to say praise be to God. And now they're saying here, especially here in New York, that it's going to be the most virulent time and not to go anywhere, not to go to the store, not to go to pharmacy, not to go anywhere uh, during this week. I'm not very eloquent with the words, but I have deep emotional uh, prowess about me. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And I tell you that this is absolutely the wrong thing to do insofar as what, is the, what the government is doing to close the Places of worship. You want to close the restaurants and the bars and the dance clubs and work, college and university. All right. But to close the house of worship, you can have it open. People can have the choice whether to go or not to go. But never before in history has this happened. Those of us who believe in God, believe in Jesus, who pray to the universe, who pray, pray to Mother Earth, we all collectively, as I said in other videos, give faith and cry out for this wickedness to stop. And I know wickedness is a, 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 not a heavy word, but it's a detrimental one because, again, so many Human souls are passing through the membrane from life to death collectively around this world. And God sees all and knows all. And there will be retribution upon this earth. This is more than world. world I'm so upset. This is more than wartime, of any time. And again, I'm not very eloquent with the words, but I have to say that there will be a raft of God that no man has ever seen before in history. And that's all I have to say. Accept, pray, cry out to God for help. God be with you.